Over the years it has become clear that the Russian Federation needs to renew its fleet of tactical bombers. To understand this, it is important to note that most of the units in the Russian arsenal come from the Soviet era. In fact, its most modern exponent dates back to 1981. With 40 years of service, the Tupolev Tu-160 returns to the world stage of military aviation, as it will be completely renovated to act in the 21st century. While awaiting the arrival of its new stealth bomber project, the PAC-DA, the Kremlin has decided to renew its aerial arsenal with the new White Swans, the Tu-160M and Tu-160M-2, two variants of the classic Soviet Tupolev that feature many novelties. With their expanded characteristics, especially range and speed, as well as the ability to carry hypersonic missiles, Russia's new tactical bombers promise to fill the Kremlin's lack of air power. They also have a new type of radar, extremely sophisticated, which allows aircraft to fire backwards, known as RLS or rearview radar, and increases the self-defense capacity of the Tu-160. With these updates, Russia ensures that the Soviet plane will rise from its ashes like a phoenix. Today we'll review in detail all these elements, and what will be the role of the White Swan in the future. If we analyze the great arsenal of the Russian Air Force, we quickly see that the power they have in terms of fighters is not matched by their heavy or tactical bombers. The truth is that the Kremlin has a huge lack regarding these aircraft, which are probably the ones that have made the least progress in the last 40 years. The poor and antiquated state of the Tupolevs has led even U.S. Defense Ministry sources to scoff at Russian aircraft, saying their place is in historical museums, not battlefields. The Kremlin is also aware of this shortcoming, since years ago it began its pact DA tactical bomber project, which includes stealth elements, in a design very similar to the American V-2 Spirit. However, the development of the novel aircraft has been delayed several times, and the date of entry into service is looming in the late 2020s. In the meantime, they decided to look for a short-term solution, which could meet the needs posed by the war of the new millennium. In 2005 the project arose to modernize the old Tupolev Tu-160 that rested in Russian hangars. Russia has 16 of these beasts, and another 19 were in Ukraine's arsenals, but were returned to Russian territory, although their current whereabouts are uncertain. First, we'll look at the aspects of the White Swan that haven't been changed since its introduction in 1981. The White Swan is a tactical bomber, that is, with the ability to deploy nuclear weapons. Its length is 54.1 meters, its height is 13.1 and its wingspan varies according to the position of the wings. An important part of its design, in addition to the long-necked, stylized shape that gave it its nickname, is that its wings have variable geometry, so they can be deployed or retracted according to the needs of the aircraft. With a 66 degrees tilt, they give a 35.60 meter wingspan, which extends to 55.70 meters at a 20 degrees tilt. The Tu-160 weighs 111,000 kilograms empty, and its maximum takeoff weight is 275,000 kilograms. Of this cargo capacity, some 80,000 kilograms, divided into two internal weapons bays, are dedicated to carrying missiles and bombs. Its maximum operational speed is 2,222 kilometers per hour, and its range is 12,300 kilometers, although in the case of the 2160M it can be extended to almost 15,000 kilometers. This is because the classic Samaritrud NK321 turbofan engines of the original were replaced by a new version of them, the Kuznetsov NK3202, which, while retaining thrust and top speed, provides greater autonomy and operational range. What really sets the 2160 m and M2 apart from the originals is their updated avionics, including long-distance detection sensors, digital displays, GPS-assisted Doppler, inertial navigation systems, satellite connectivity, and fly-by-wire control. It also integrates a new rear-view radar, which is capable of locating targets in an area of 180 degrees from the tail of the plane. This rear view greatly increases the aircraft's self-defense capabilities, as it can fire missiles to intercept pursuing fighters, as well as air-to-air -air or ground-to-air projectiles. This technology began to be developed in 1980 but was never used until now. The Russians considered that, for a heavy bomber that is at the mercy of fighters, such a system is of high value. The 2160M2 version is very similar to the 160M, but with two major differences. First of all, these are aircraft built from the ground up, using the White Swan blueprints and the latest avionics. 
The second feature is the ability to launch projectiles as deadly as the Kinzel, a nuclear-capable hypersonic ballistic missile. The KH-47M2, also known as the Dagger, was introduced in 2017 as one of the superweapons presented by Vladimir Putin. Its maximum range, when fired from bombers, is about 3,000 kilometers, and its maximum speed varies from Mach 10 to Mach 12, depending on the source consulted. Roughly speaking, this means that the Kinzel is capable of hitting a target at the limit of its range in around 12 minutes. The KH-47M2 is propelled by a solid fuel rocket and carries a warhead capable of carrying up to 500 kilograms. As mentioned above, it can use either conventional or nuclear warheads, making it a brutal threat aboard a tactical bomber like the 2160M. To give us an idea of what this means, if the Kremlin wanted to launch an attack with the Tupolevs and the Kinsels against Washington, it could do so in a span of three hours, from the takeoff of the planes to the impact of the missiles. If we consider a much closer target for Russia, such as Ukraine, a devastating blow could come in a matter of seconds. If we add to this that the Kinzel's margin of error is only one meter, we can see that its nickname the Dagger is completely justified. The Russian Federation Air Force has already used the Kinzel in Ukraine when 222 bombers launched it to destroy an underground weapons depot, which was completely devastated. Later, three missiles hit Odessa, and some MiG-31s were seen carrying these missiles in the Kaliningrad region. In an attempt to downplay the power of the Kinzel, US President Joe Biden said, as everyone knows, it's an important weapon, but it packs the same warhead as any other ballistic missile. It really doesn't make that much of a difference, except that it's almost impossible to stop it. Americans are evidently well aware of the power of upgraded Russian bombers, coupled with the Kremlin's new shells, which no longer seem to belong in museums but on battlefields. The skies of the North Arctic will soon be occupied by a huge silhouette. A stealthy beast equipped with hypersonic missiles capable of destroying entire neighborhoods. It is neither a B-2 Spirit nor the new B-21, but its main competition, a project that Russia has been running for years and that is only now taking its first steps towards the battlefield. Since Soviet times, the aircraft industry has been a pride for Russia, and bombers are a specialty of the house. The Russian Air Force hasn't updated its bomber fleet in a while, but the Kremlin intends its next unit to serve as a gateway to the new era of military aviation, where stealth and detection capabilities are at the core. In this video we will take you to Kazan, a city where the Pak da is being built, a state-of-the-art Russian bomber to compete hand-in-hand -hand with NATO. A possible project or just another delusion of the Kremlin? Join us to discover it. Although Russia is a true aeronautical power, the truth is that stealth technology has always been an American specialty. Historically, the American giant has a technological advantage that began with the legendary F-117 Nighthawk and that Washington hopes to perpetuate with the development of the B-21 Raider. For Vladimir Putin, this is unacceptable. In the near future he dreams of contesting the throne of stealth bombers with the Pac-DA, his latest toy, which will soon have its first flight tests. To ensure good results, Putin put the legendary Tupolev company, responsible for the iconic Soviet Tu-22M and Tu-160 bombers used during the Cold War, in charge of the project. Of course, according to Soviet tradition, the Kremlin keeps information about this model well guarded. So much of the information will provide you with his assumptions. In other words, until we see the Pak da flying, it is wise to take Russian claims with a grain of salt. Let's start by clarifying that Pak da is just an abbreviation of a much longer name that we can translate as Prospective Air Complex for Long Range Aviation. The need for a shorter name is obvious, but there are several interesting concepts in that sentence that hint at what Putin is after. The idea of long range is fundamental for the confrontations of the future. The Pak da is estimated to have an operational range of 12,000 kilometers meaning it will be able to bring Russian ballistic power from Moscow to New York, Dallas, or even northern Australia. 
The crew will not have to worry about refueling as it will be ready to fly for 30 hours circling its target or hiding in the highest clouds. As for its design, the engineers were largely based on the TU-160 but with tweaks to make it more aerodynamic. From above the ship resembles a manta ray with its fins spread. A weapons bay can be seen on the prototypes installed behind the cockpit, a format similar to that of the two-seat B-2 Spirit Bomber. We mentioned before that the pac DA will be able to hide for hours in the clouds, the idea is that it can operate perfectly up to 20,000 meters. This is beneficial both for escaping powerful modern radars and for carrying out strike operations on heavily protected targets. At such altitudes, a powerful engine is needed, so possibly four AL-41F1 turbofan engines will be used, which will give it a much lower subsonic speed than its predecessor, the TU-160. This is important since initially they had flirted with the possibility of making a hypersonic bomber, that is, one that exceeds 3,400 kilometers per hour. Finally, in 2013 the Russian Bureau had to change this requirement to favor other features such as stealth and weapons load. Speaking of more general data, experts assure that the pac da will be able to operate even at temperatures of 50 degrees below zero and survive the effects of a nuclear explosion. Some versions speak of variable geometry wings, although the latter was not confirmed. But the concept of a bomber implies firepower, and plenty of it. It is estimated that this ship will have about 30 tons of weapons. To give you dimension, this is double the armament that the American B-21 will be able to carry. In its arsenal, the pac da will feature conventional bombs, nuclear missiles, and even hypersonic missiles like the KH-95 and KH-47M2. We have already pointed out in other videos that incorporating this type of weaponry is on the agendas of the main powers, and Russia could not be left out of the hypersonic obsession. According to the Russian Air Force, it will be capable of launching all existing and future weapons, will be equipped with the latest communications and electronic warfare, and will also have a negligible radar signature. But beyond these wonderful announcements, where is the pac da project really in its production? To assess the feasibility of pac da it is helpful to review its history. The first rumors of a new stealth bomber began in the 1990s, but it was not until 2007 that the first concrete proposal was presented to materialize the Kremlin's dreams. The requirements presented by the Air Force resulted in a plane as fast as the legendary TU-160 but with the ability to carry new weapons and incorporate stealth technology. After the austere 90s, it was time to upgrade and show the world the Federation's technological prowess. But only in 2013 there was new news about the project, this time confirming that it would be a stealth ship, but with subsonic speed and not hypersonic speed, a necessary sacrifice to improve the stealth of the new bomber. Another six years passed in from the Kazan Aviation plant the first prototype of the mysterious ship was presented with great fanfare. But to this day the first tests have not yet been carried out. It is estimated that between 2024 and 2025 the first flight of the long-awaited bomber that has already received the nickname the messenger will take place. It is still unknown if its message will be forceful or will be lost along the way. Russia does not want to repeat the torturous experience with its Su-57 fifth generation fighter, which took more than a decade to be ready for service and has yet to be reported for serial production. Did Putin's engineers take note of past mistakes? Only time can give us the answer. If you like this content, we invite you to subscribe to the channel and activate notifications. In the pinned comment and in the description we also leave you links to other videos. Thank you for joining us until the end and we'll meet again in the next deliveries of military aviation.